एस एम बी कनेक्ट इंडिया लार्जेस्ट इंटीग्रेटेड सोल्यूशन प्लेटफॉर्म विच कनेक्ट एस एम ईज एंड ऑन्टरप्रन्योर अक्रॉस द नेशन डिस्पाइट सेवरल गवर्नमेंट इनिशिएटिव एंड प्रोग्राम इंडियन ऑन्टरप्रन्योर एंड एस एम ईज आर स्टिल फेसिंग मेनी चैलेंजेस आर मिशन इज टू हेल्प दैम ओवरकम दो बाय एक्टिंग एज अ कैटलिस्ट इन प्रोपेलिंग बिजनेस ग्रोथ promoting innovation technological advancement and digitalization and making them successful global players we have devised five pillars to stimulate productivity and growth of smes start manage expand series annual knowledge event series organized concurrently in different cities of india atweta to recognize and celebrate women entrepreneurs of india accelerate entrepreneur awards to honor excellent and accelerating businesses listing services provide a platform to expand digital footprint and customer outreach advisory services help smes deal with industry specific challenges and accelerate growth nationally recognized and well acclaimed in india smb connect is an industry pioneer that supports smes by providing strategic and innovative end to end solutions together let's help small businesses overcome all odds and succeed because small can be big good evening everybody uh, a very warm welcome to probably the last webinar of 2020 for all of us my name is sandeepan i am the founder director of smb connect we are one of the largest network of smes and businesses across india at smb connect we had organized over 100 conferences across different part of india before the pandemic hit us uh, and as the pandemic uh, started we thought move the physical interactions and do uh, conduct a lot many webinars for smes uh covering topics from marketing to sustainability to operations to hr and as government of india and the prime minister started uh, talking about local and vocal we have uh, started a website called localandvocal.online where businesses can list their products and services i would request you all to please utilize the services which is currently free today's webinar is about the impact of covid and as we all know covid-19 has impacted businesses big time it has paralyzed the planning process of an organization which is what we thought at smb connect it would be good to get some guidance from experts how we can plan next year so smb connect game plan 2021 vision 2025 is a compilation of over 20 thought provoking articles of this eminent personality today we have the pleasure of five experts who will be sharing their thoughts with us so let me introduce them one by one first we have mr rajiv gotke he is a strategic consultant and expert in advising sales distribution and marketing for fmcg companies with over 38 years of vast and diversified experience in various renowned fmcg uh, uh, fmcg organizations right from setting up and launching new products he is presently based out of pune and handling multiple consulting assi uh, assignment for msms to help them developing and executing sales distribution and marketing strategy apart from mr rajiv we have mr sanjay nagi he is managing director of market insights consultant a division of tomorrow's market innovators private limited uh, mic serves government of india top corporates uh, has uh, help structured entry of more than 80 firms in across india in india he is the global trainer consultant mentor an early stage investor as well as uh, an expert speaker who provides valuable insights into innovations uh, marketing strategy and customer services our next uh, expert on panel today is sarita chauhan she is founder of evoke inspiring lives uh, an organization working for facilitating women and aspiring women entrepreneurs established women entrepreneurs to help them to reach new heights she is also founder director of a consulting startup called fast writers network communication private limited with over 15 years of experience she has been a, a recipient of many awards 
and helps uh, uh, women entrepreneurs in particular to achieve new heights. Our next speaker I would like to introduce is Mr. Sham Shekhar. He is an ecosystem partner of CII Startup Entrepreneur, uh, a Rotary Chartered Club uh, Director, is Club Secretary and President Nominee of Distinguished Digital Leader. He is the Chief Maintenance Strategist uh, of Virtual CMO with an experience of 25 years in various top-notch organizations. He has worked as Catalyst, Transformation Specialist, and a Growth Expert. And we will ex we are expected to join by uh, Mr. Rajneesh Singh. He will be expect uh, to join us very soon. is an H &A, uh, is an expert in HR, and uh, he is currently the managing partner of Simply HR, a Delhi-based HR firm uh, providing end-to-end -end HR services. So these are uh, our expert panel. Welcome all, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So. Uh, before we, we, we go and start discussion uh, with them, uh, let me uh, share a few minutes about this. Uh, <laughs> the we are all joined here. Uh, this ebook, uh, Game Plan 2021, uh, which has around 20, uh, over 25 or uh, 20 uh, experts sharing their views about the plans and uh, and how we can proceed for next five years. So let's understand who are the, uh, let's uh, uh, have a look at this particular ebook. So may I request my team to please launch the video uh, so that we can have a have a look and we will be sharing a link to your chat box to download this book, which uh, can also be sent to you through a link on your email. So may I request the launch of the book, please? The COVID-19 pandemic has been like a synchronized shock bringing the global economy to halt. By the end of 2020, the world's GDP saw a steep decline. Small and medium enterprises, that form the backbone of the Indian economy, were badly affected by this pandemic. An estimated 140 million jobs were affected. Widespread lockdowns turbocharged a widespread change in the way we work. There is however, one way the economy can recover and it is by letting go of the legacy frameworks, modernizing operating models, and adapting to the change that confronts us. Small and medium enterprises face their own unique challenges, whether to take the path of cost-cutting or surge ahead by leveraging technology and digital transformation. SMB Connect is proud to present Game Plan 2021 Vision 2025 over 20 renowned professionals from diverse industries and specializations have contributed to this ebook. Their thoughts and advice that can be guiding principles for businesses. Game Plan 2021 Vision 2025 can help you navigate your way successfully into the next normal. So we have uh, our experts, uh, and this book, as uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, will be available to all the people who are participating and joining us. And we will share a link uh, of this to you on the chat box, and also will be sent to you uh, to uh, 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 through your email. So we can see uh, Rajneesh has also joined. So and uh, I have introduced the speakers. So let's uh, start today's proceeding. Thank you all for uh, being available, being here. Uh, let me uh, start by asking uh, 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 Sanjay uh, Nagiji. Uh, he has, uh, in his book, uh, uh, in his article, has talked about Kirana stores. And during this lockdown, uh, the local Kirana store has helped everybody to actually with uh, with all the essentials. In his article, uh, Sanjay has talked about the digital makeover of Kirana stores uh, to remain relevant in the current business environment. Sanjay, may I uh, request you to please help us understand this better? How uh, uh, and also let us know how the learnings of being uh, going digital can uh, be implemented in other sectors apart from how it can help uh, the Kirana store to be more relevant in the current environment. Uh, thank you, Sandeepan. Uh, thank you, SMB Connect. Uh, and uh, welcome uh, and good evening to all the uh, uh, people who are in the audience. Uh, we can't see you, but we know there are so many of you and uh, love to share certain experiences as you go along. Uh, I have a benefit of having uh, 37 years of work experience, Sandeepan, 
and if somebody had told me at that time that a couple of years down the line in your living memory there will be a small device which you will be able to call internationally uh, whoever you want with just a press of a button i would have said this is science fiction because you know we used to stand in those days in lines in front of cto central telegraph office in uh, bangalore or bombay uh, to make a call to our homes you know that was like so if somebody had said there would be a small device like that it would be science fiction so similar that that gave me an idea that in the next uh, 20 years or 25 years if i forecast something to happen again today people are going to believe it is going to be a science fiction but in the last 37 years i've been around we have made various uh, predictions we have made various models we have uh, given some assessments to both corporates etc uh, and we believe that uh, the kind of relationships that are going to exist between a kirana shop and the e-commerce industry uh, is something that today we can't even imagine about uh, now there are two reasons for this one is that the convenience which a kirana shop uh, gives you as a you know you just uh, walk into the uh, kirana shop he recognizes you he knows about your family he knows about uh, your uh, mother's operation etc so there's a lot of relationship at work and relationship is a very strong driver i think that's a different subject altogether so let me not get into that but the relationship which a kirana shop enjoys with its customer is uh, is unparalleled e-commerce cannot do that right Uh, the second is the convenience convenience well e-commerce and uh, kirana shop is almost the same kirana shop will deliver it to you over the phone uh, and uh, some small guy will walk over with your uh, stuff within 5 7 minutes of your ordering and e-commerce you might have to wait for one day or whatever but you get uh, the thing again door delivered to you so the convenience i believe is more or less uh, roughly balanced and uh, now we're trying to construct a value bundle which will happen by all of this uh, coming together how can the value bundle be created between the very good thriving ecosystem of the kirana shops as well as the growing e-commerce industry in india which is now a good 7% of the retail sales that we are having uh, over there so uh, one thing has already been started by uh, reliance uh, and i believe they plan to do this in a bigger uh, measure Uh, but mu- multiple ways will happen so number one uh, you order through uh, e-commerce and it might get delivered instead of a fleet management company delivering it from a say an amazon uh, warehouse and a fleet management company with its logistics costs etc coming and delivering it to you it might get delivered by a local kirana shop that is one model which we see definitely emerging and today definitely it look like science fiction another model we see emerging is that the uh, kirana shop will not necessarily need to buy from the uh, uh, companies maybe there are intermediaries who come in the market maybe there are e-commerce uh, players who come into the market who uh, you know become the intermediary between the market uh, a mandi uh, or a rice mill owner etc and then they become the new distribution arm for all these kirana shops Uh, who can then just order digitally and uh, they get their inventory management done through that so these are uh, two things uh, that we definitely uh, see uh, as happening and uh, we we see these as potential we've done a lot of uh, background research both the e-commerce players as well as the uh, kirana shops uh, both of them agree that yes it doesn't seem like not a possibility when and how it will happen of course time will tell, tell sandeepan but i think this is uh, what is the new emerging landscape of india uh, the kirana shop somebody was forecasting that the kirana shops will get wiped away uh, that's not got wiped away in a mature country like even usa so this the kirana shops will remain in fact they will thrive more in this ecosystem with this new kind of a configuration which is happening between e-commerce and kirana shops that is our assessment and then let's see how time unfolds in the next couple of years we'll see Uh, this emerging thank you uh, sanjay any learning uh, about this collaboration with for other sectors uh, which was my second uh, uh, question leading to this uh, yes uh, so in the same model uh, startups have started uh, and uh, 
we have many startup experts uh, over here uh, so is the startups have started using the e-commerce models uh, also to disrupt uh, what they say is the traditional uh, value chain so if you if you treat the kirana shop as a traditional value chain and a traditional uh, seller to you uh, similarly you have uh, uh, you know uh, so many um, like if you want to today go for a building you don't need to go out of your home there are uh, intermediary startups who have everything under one roof so for buildings whatever you need whether you need cement or wire what we used to uh, engage various contractors when we were building our homes today you can order through an intermediary so the traditional value chains are getting disrupted in that sense now uh, each one is getting i believe a, a very sub optimal uh, share of the market because there's too much of a uh migration across the market so the uh, shop is also getting disrupted but nothing that really affects his basic existence the startup is also getting a few cases he is uh, ramping up in his own pace but it's not too much uh, uh, you know it's not so something like a game changer it's not become another flip cart or something like that so in most cases there is a sub optimal uh you can say response to market to the new ways that intermediation in the market context is being worked out uh, there i believe again this collaboration uh, can be a very good uh, good model both way collaboration one on wholesaling market intermediation between uh, say a large manufacturer to these uh, shops and uh, a tech method to do that and number one the delivery me mechanism because logistics costs especially in building materials for example or in many other categories can sometimes be quite high so you try to maintain a central warehouse across these uh, categories it can become uh, a very uh, huge uh, problem uh, i will uh, tell you the example of a uh, clean beauty uh, e-commerce uh, portal uh, uh i should not take names because that would not be fair and needlessly giving publicity to one particular person but because we are trying to share learnings with somebody so he represents now today in just two years from two brands he represents today 75 brands who are selling clean beauty and the uh, the proposition is that you don't need to search and your certified players are there in clean beauty you just go to their portal you order so we were trying to ask him the same uh, thing that ultimately this this product is also available on its own uh, e-commerce site it's also available on a retail store so what is your differentiator and while working out and strategizing around that we found that this collaboration can actually uh, give a lot of uh, gains uh, and a lot of value can be created over there it may not be necessarily manifest in immediate turnovers etc but the value that can be created can be very interesting uh, when uh, the e-commerce intersects uh, the normal traditional markets so other sectors uh, clean beauty we see it happening uh, building materials we definitely see it happening uh, uh, services uh, we see it a, a lot happening uh, now you can just uh, get it under one roof you know uh, architect comes from somewhere Uh, the structural designer comes from somewhere and your house is ready in that way so a lot lots of potentials are there to disrupt the traditional value chain and i think vision 2025 is exactly uh, telling us this that today we are at this point but in 2025 uh, the uh, the vision which you have articulated uh, there would be a lot of changes and the mood point and the common point which i think all speakers uh, will be saying and i have the coming in first is that those who are going to remain static are going to get wiped out of the market and those who are going to evolve are going to uh, have lots of experiences and ultimately create more value for themselves it's definitely going to happen we are making it happen for so many people and uh, uh, i'm sure uh, this will uh, turn out to be a good way that this uh, ecosystems uh, around buying uh, will definitely evolve in the next few years Thanks, Sanjay. I think it's pretty uh, insightful. Uh, moving forward and keeping this discussion with the Kirana store, which is uh, one of the prime, uh, has a major role in the growth of any FMCG product. So let me ask this question to Rajiv, uh, who is uh, have expertise in FMCG uh, ecosystem. What should a consumer product organization do uh, next year? Because 
uh, that is something got really disrupted uh, during this entire lockdown and pandemic. Uh, you have shared a few views about that, the process they should follow. So maybe uh, you can share your thoughts right now uh, uh, so that uh, for, the people, for all our audience here. So Rajiv. Uh, uh, thank you, Sandeepan. Uh, thank you for inviting me to this uh, to, to, to write an article for the book. Thank you for inviting me to the webinar and welcome everyone. Namaskar. Uh, now, before the lockdown, uh, things were going pretty smoothly for uh, the industry, uh, very healthy growth. But suddenly we saw a lockdown um, spanning six, seven, eight months. Uh, which has uh, affected top lines for most companies. I would say almost everyone. And uh, also that has impacted their uh, infrastructure in terms of uh, retailing, distribution, coverage, width, depth, retail selling, uh, you know, the products, everything. So in my article, this is what I've recommended that, you know, we need to uh, focus on the basics in terms of uh, uh, serving uh, servicing the uh, the trade as it were the trade comprises essentially the distributors the retailers the wholesalers and here the sales force plays a very important role now uh, with the uh, uh, with the uh, you know uh, lockdown lifting i mean in the sense it markets opening up the government relaxing uh, the the rules. I think uh, companies need to focus on uh, better coverage and uh, re retailing efforts uh, via their sales force. That's what I uh, recommend. Because unless uh, the trade is on your side, the consumers will never be able to get your products. And uh, that is important, in my opinion. Uh, uh, now, if you see, uh, Capital is, uh, you know, today money is uh, not available uh, with the traders. They don't have much money. So uh, like uh, Sanjay very rightly said earlier, uh, the focus will need to be on retailing and coverage and service. And that's where I uh, thought that uh, the three aspects of uh, uh, trade, uh, service and consumers this focus has to be maintained by the companies. Thanks, uh, Rajiv. I think it's, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, it has been detailed out more in, in your the article and people can really go through it and understand how you should plan if you are an FMCG organization to go about your work. Uh, now, one of the key challenges uh, this pandemic has uh, uh, post uh, is the has, has basically has major impact on the people and the jobs and uh, my next question is to rajiv uh, sorry is to rajneesh is as a business leader how do we plan our people plan uh, plan our uh, people and resources in the coming year and uh, so 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 that uh, we can uh, be a uh, step ahead so rajneesh thank you sandeepan uh, i hope i am audible yes Thank you so much. So thank you for having me uh, for this uh, very interesting webinar. And uh, thank you for everyone who's joined this uh, webinar, uh, the whole launch of this ebook, which is a wonderful initiative. I think all of us need to really relearn a lot of things. So if an ebook is coming along, I think it's a great uh, gesture on part of the SMB uh, Connect team. Uh, I think it's time to unlearn a lot of things because nobody really knows still how the future is going to be. And, and we are still hitting in the dark. Um, and my sense on the people, very clearly moving forward, I think three quarters down, uh, we see a bit of an uptick. Uh, and, and we are all feeling very, very optimistic, which is a great sign. Uh, but again, uh, the Q3 could be a kind of a, it, it could again be a, a, a quarter which could mislead us in many ways because it's a, it's a high festive month. And so you had the sales happening, you had the traffic coming in, footfalls happening, but come Q4 and Q1 of next year, I think these two quarters are going to really determine how things are going to play out over the entire 21-22. Uh, 
so my bet right now is that people are still very cautious. It's not that the hiring is not happening. People have started hiring, but I think people will be very cautious. Uh, I think what has hit everybody very clearly is the cost factor. Uh, and, and so whether it were uh, uh, the whole uh, cut thing that started happening around salaries, wages, which eventually also led to some job cuts happening. Uh, my sense is that even if hiring starts happening, uh, every employer, especially in the SME space, is, is going to be very, very mindful of the cost factor. And they're going to think really 20 times whom they are hiring uh, and, and uh, what is the deliverable they will get. Uh, like I've written in my article, there's going to be from a compensation standpoint, all hiring will see a lot of variable component really going up, which is going to be linked to the company performance as well as to the individual performance. So I see a, a lot of shift happening, not only in the hiring, uh, where uh, honestly, I see very less of uh, hiring happening at senior, very experienced people. I see younger people being hired more, mid-level pretty much good. Uh, they will be more and more hired because suddenly uh, from both cost and experience, it is being felt that somebody with a max 15 years is, is a great bet. Uh, people above 20 years are, are, are definitely going to find it a challenge to really find job opportunities moving forward. So those are, those are some of the signals that one sees very clearly where uh, people, uh, so on the other side of if you're a candidate, I think uh, two words for them also that there is so much of uh, unskilling, reskilling to be done. Uh, I think that is very, very critical, which is what I said at the beginning of, about unlearning. Uh, so from a uh, from a job seeker standpoint, I think it's, it's very, very important that how are you upgrading yourself to meet the new challenges of, of what, you know, the new world is going to be where, uh, like Sanjayji was saying, is going to be more digital and digital. Uh, so I think uh, two quarters to be really watched, uh, Q4 and Q1. And I guess then probably one should be really betting on on really ramping up. And I think these are still very, very cautious times. So we'll, we'll wait, wait and watch now. Thanks, Rajneesh. Uh, I think this is uh, good, good so you have to start thinking about your pl our planning and resources. Uh, Difficult choices. Uh, let me ask uh, 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 about uh, uh, ask Sham Seker. He is talking about it is about choices. It is about what we are choosing today. Uh, shall we wait for the pandemic to be over, or shall we take a decision and plan something? So Sham, uh, uh, why don't you share uh, uh, this in detail uh, when you talk about is about choice and what you choose today? Sham, we can't hear you. Sham, we can't hear you. Yeah, am I audible now? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you, Sandeepan. And Namaste, Namaskar. Thanks to all the fellow panelists uh, and uh, all the other audience who are watching it live. Um, <clears throat> as they have uh, mentioned, started off in the book saying uh, there are things that are controllable and non-controllables, right? And um, pandemic and other things, I don't even talk about. Okay, because uh, I also run a podcast which we the word of corona and covid are absolutely banned in our podcast up box it okay um uh, if something comes up we say this audio is not going to go live and not even the spell of the word because end of the day it's all about uh, business or uh, game it's all about the mind you know how you react to things and how you get things moving up so when people even tell me i mean about a couple of weeks ago i was meeting with some more entrepreneurs and uh, one of the questions is, so what do you plan to do? I think uh, 1st January onwards, we'll do something. Let 2021 come. Why not today? Right? If you can't change today, what will change in the next 15 days? Are you thinking that a million vaccines will be pumped up in every city and then you are trying to make a change? So come on, I think let's be realistic. At the same time, of course, we are cautious. We are not uh, you know, working all days from office. Uh, it's probably one day a week we look at uh, meeting up and doing things around and ensure everything goes fine. So it's all about uh, playing the game of, uh, you know, in the mind and ensuring that you are able to take the next steps forward. So having said that, uh, the mindset becomes absolutely critical for an entrepreneur, whether it's a startup company or a SME company or even a large corporate, right? I think the game, uh, whether they win or uh, they lose, starts right from that point onwards. Then it's a question of pragmatic approach and the way the logic you apply and uh, have the business and the other skills that you are able to bring in. 
will help you uh, get the business uh, kicked off in that and of course then we talk about uh, you know multiple areas that we should look at focusing uh, from the business side of it from the operational side of it from the digital like everybody have used the term digital so i will also use the same thing um, so how do you leverage uh, digital far more effectively to ensure that every pieces are you know well connected and things like that Thanks, Sham. Uh, I think it's good that this is basically the decision. Uh, should I start today? Should we do tomorrow? Should we wait for something? And I think uh, when, when as a business owner, you you know that these are the constraints. You need to look at opportunities within the constraint. And I'm very happy with when, uh, when we saw the article from Sarita, and she is talking predominantly the kind of opportunities that are available uh, uh, for businesses because of pandemic. Uh, so, uh, Sarita, why don't you share what are the opportunities uh, businesses can have, uh, uh, which has been, uh, which is because of the pandemic, it has came in the front. Yeah. Okay. So, first of all, uh, thank you, Sandeepan ji, uh, for the opportunity of writing an article as well as to come on this webinar for the launch of the ebook. Thank you so much. Um, coming to the opportunities, I think I feel there are a lot of opportunities right now to start and move into you know new businesses and basically i see it from two angles which is one is the policy you know there are changes in uh, economic policy and what's happening at the government level and if you see that i think i feel uh, there's a huge opportunity of uh, chinese substitution first of uh, all you know uh, for manufacturing especially and sell things uh, locally uh, and as well as internationally because china is has got really bad name right now in many countries. And, uh, you know, this could be from handset, toys, uh, et cetera. Now, the other angle to see this is the opportunity from the uh, social distancing or the lockdown angle, which is, uh, you know, people can start pick up and delivery services, online education applications from tuitions to business. Everything is right now happening, uh, you know, online. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people, including, you know, the Coaching industry, I know 70% people did not think of uh, doing everything online. Uh, I was partially doing it, but I've seen a lot of coaches come online. A lot of, you know, uh, if we see uh, the growth of uh, this particular app, uh, you know, uh, for students and you see so many new apps are coming right now. So online education app, which you can go to house, you know, give to housewives, to businesses, anything you can think of. Then grocery delivery, uh, medicine delivery. If you see e-commerce marketplaces uh, are right now are huge in demand because people are ordering everything, you know, online med medicines, even doctors on demand, nurses, caretakers. You see fitness and wellness apps have suddenly come up so much and then if you focus on a particular section uh, for example mental fitness or if you see a lifestyle disease uh, if you're handling just one uh, section of it you can make huge change and grow your business food delivery essentials manufacturing online events meeting platform because you know a lot of people are not using zoom uh, which was quite preferred earlier uh, now there are a lot of local uh, students and uh, entrepreneurs who are build, building meeting platforms in india then you see content writing ebooks lot of opportunities are there uh, then again you know you see economic policy angle again defense industry electrical vehicle manufacturing green technology waste management so i see it from a very positive angle right now if you see uh, the future it looks bright to me i mean there are so many opportunities people can now you know they can diversify in new businesses or they can actually start new business great i think there, there are opportunities uh, there are definitely a lot of opportunities and i'm sure uh, uh, businesses are uh, who are uh, ready to grab this opportunity and invest uh, on that uh, is going to survive and, and actually excel in near future. Uh, but when you are looking for opportunity, you look at hiring people. Uh, so my question to Rajneesh again is now, when you start looking for hiring people, how do you look at the cost? Because again, as he has talked about, the next two quarters are crucial. Uh, so do we, invest on uh, people with higher experience or we invest on people with uh, some expertise or look at what are the uh, strategy uh, an organization should apply uh, for as the business is opening up uh, for hiring so i think uh, sandeepan again uh, I, i'm sure it's going to differ for uh, different people somebody 
starting up right now will have a different approach i'm sure somebody who's already there in the business will do some recalibration on their hiring plans uh, but broadly i think it is important to really be uh, very very crystal clear on hiring and, and which i keep telling every entrepreneur that please spend lot of time when you are hiring somebody i mean that is an investment you are doing so this is this is again a good time again i am repeating the word cost because uh, we have been all hit hard because of the cost factor i think it's important that you spend quality time when you are really uh, selecting the person uh, and and you know the moment you really take a call also and, and which we are experiencing right now that lot of clients are are taking lot of time to actually close a position so which means that people are spending lot of time and which i believe is the right way to do the hiring i think the more you do that and and some of the best companies the largest companies really carry out some eight level interviews and also i think those are some of the best practices which i would recommend even to a startup or to a uh, or to a sme also because let us understand i think it's very very important this whole nine month story is all about people uh, as much as businesses have got affected but end of the day it is a human game all said and done and which is what sham mentioned that you know it's the way you look at it a lot of people are seeing it as an opportunity while many people see it as a crisis i think huge innovations in history whenever you look back every innovation has followed a crisis you know so i think a lot of innovations is what one expects and which is what sarita was listing out so many interesting fields or which means that if i was doing an x type of job earlier now moving forward 2021 onwards i need to again i am re reusing the word reskill myself so i think from a hiring plan standpoint lot of time to be spent judiciously i think whatever money you are spending on people please spend it very very carefully uh, there is no penny to be really wasted anywhere i i don't think that luxury really will exist for the next 2 to 3 years i think that's a time probably over 2 3 years when you are about just about settling down uh, in your business and when things are really looking up is a time to really probably take the pedal off a bit on being too judicious and probably start you know hiring or ramping up more and and taking in more people so my sense is right now a word of caution again spend lot of time when you are hiring somebody thanks rajesh yep, uh, sanjay Sorry. have yeah. sanjay yeah please go ahead Uh, i i uh, would like to uh, add on to what rajneesh is saying uh, i think especially for startups there are two other opportunities uh, one is to uh, not hire with a cost but uh, hire with sharing of equity which is already there uh, pretty much so startups are comfortable with having a equity sharing so you give 5% to an employee and you you allow it creeping so it's a, you instead of a paying a lakh a month uh, salary they pay them 20000 and then they say if you work one year with these kras you will get another 1% share so that way you bind the person for 5 years so this is a hiring practice which is i think very popular we have done this for many startups that we work with another uh, thing that we have recently innovated around the startups is that uh, like one of the startups it, it uh, when started with just v books so they wanted to be your content developer then when i looked at that and i came in as a mentor i inverted that i said let's get into personality development and let's get into the complete uh, you know what do you need really and then from what you need you make the content around the vbook so the vbook is not a, just a me to vbook which any publisher is doing it is a curated uh, vbook for what people want to do Uh, then we hit upon the idea of using some gamification so now there was an option of hiring 20 people or 5 people to do a gamification whereas i have another uh, startup which is specifically into gamification for entrepreneurs so i said why don't you do one thing you get connected with him uh, and uh, i am the common link between both you both work with each other find out a way of agreeing and working with each other so now at zero cost and with the mutual win win Uh, they have both started collaborating with each other and uh, they have not hired a single new person this guy's bench gets better loaded he gets some more revenue he spends less than hiring full time people so i think these uh, innovative ways are to be networking and sla based what is called sla means service level agreement based uh, we did this in the airport sector uh, in india 
everything is outsourced the trolley is outsourced the uh, baggage is outsourced the um, uh, check in is outsourced everything is outsourced to some agency hardly anything you do yourself uh, everything is outsourced with slas clear service agreements and uh, you know my teams are at the airports if they uh, mention something wrong or they uh, find some housekeeping problem uh, they are so empowered that they just send that photo and uh, the will of that housekeeping agency will get deducted because our teams could find a non conformity it's that level of slas are being made so i would encourage anyone in the audience to start looking uh, principally what rajneesh is saying is absolutely right be very cautious uh, spend very carefully and spend it with uh, with a, a linkage to results so variable component which he spoke about but also try these uh, other two techniques which i've shared with you well, yeah that's very important collaboration i think is something is another word uh, apart <laughs> from uh, uh, the lockdown and the new normal which has really came out uh, during this entire uh, pandemic uh, another thing which is also uh, came out as part of meme is a lot of people have gone to digital transformation because of not as 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 a planning but because of necessity uh, so may i ask uh, uh, sham how uh, businesses specifically uh, manufacturing and trade uh, should look at uh, digital transformation what are the areas they should invest and what are the things they should do in near future sure as you uh, rightly said uh, sandeepan um, it's it's become a necessity uh, a few years ago when we look at automation people used to uh, uh, have the term of automation is only for the larger corporates and uh, if it comes to smes or even a startup of course startup predominantly uses technology as an enabler but smes as a segment uh, were kind of ours to uh, you know the kind of it i would call it as you know automation comes next to that um say so situation has forced them but even today i keep telling that uh, uh, you need to have um, uh, the innovation or the impact that needs to be created in the right way which means you need to work on the core aspects of it and not on the corners of it right so when you are looking at automation you should look at not just how much of cost will i cut down or how much of productivity increase i think those days are completely gone today it's a question of um, if i don't automate i may not survive right how do i bring a different kind of a product or a solution and enable customers behavior so that my business uh, outcomes are driven by the customers behavior to cater to those needs i think those are the areas uh, people should focus on so when you look at automation or when you look at digitalization i would call it as digital transformation you should look at it in two three areas so when you look at <laughs> customer side yes uh, their behaviors are changed so how do you want to spread the message you can't physically go knock the door and then talk to them so you have social media you have google how do you leverage that very effectively people are looking out for your kind of service and support so how do you make your presence felt how do you make your brand reach so the entire customer discovery process itself has changed so you will use a digital marketing to ensure that you are able to do that properly and use the right tools and the right techniques and you are able to build the strategy around it yes you are able to acquire customers look at um, uh, employees employees also good employees will look at your uh, social online presence right so which means you need to transform yourself and and have a relevant website that talks about uh, uh, what you actually do not in fact, i've been talking to companies that has 10 years 15 years old website even today you can't even see it in the mobile so yes the business is running it's fine but then i'm sure it's a matter of time before you know we, we all know the case of if adaptability is not there if uh, innovation is not picked up uh, larger organizations can actually collapse you know the number one mobile maker a uh, matter of span of a few years suddenly you know disappear from the from the industry so smes cannot be an exception which means you need to be far more agile in building those transformation in terms of how do you perceive yourself in the online space for your employees now coming back to your own systems and processes so you need to build processes and systems to ensure that your employees are able to communicate with you and able to track whether the work has happened or not which means you will need to automate some of the processes or even if it is not automation at least the dashboard results and inputs has to come to you for you to take business decisions otherwise every time you physically go and come out it's a challenge if you uh, i have sme uh, business owners who keep telling if i uh, travel outside then you know things will collapse i can't take a uh, one week off right so that has been the key 
which means even if you are sitting outside right um, you know you have a, a, a operation in delhi they are going to mumbai or probably going to singapore but you will need to have your analytics and dashboard to ensure that um, those data points are picked up and decisions are taken and you are able to empower people accordingly i think all of these areas i think digital transformation is absolutely critical and it doesn't cost a million dollars i think that's something which people have to really think uh, when uh, when whenever i keep talking about digital transformation they say um, boss we are not a very large company to invest in digital transformation you don't need to spend a million dollars you can there are tools that are absolutely free there are tools that you can subscribe for absolutely low cost right 10 dollars 20 dollars kind of a scenario but you will need to know what to use it how to use it so you need to study to understand what kind of an impact it is going to create and uh, ensure that transformation happens for your business Thanks, I mean, very important for businesses to actually look for digital transmission is just an eye opener for myself also uh, because I was very uh, one person who was against the norm of work from home but the way uh, my team has actually picked it up and uh, and I really uh, delivered uh, in the last nine months working from home remotely is really really something commendable and and, and helps us to actually uh, automate a lot of stuff uh, yes. to 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 going for, uh, forward in next couple of years. Uh, now, let me ask Sarita now. This is one important thing. Uh, so she has been working a lot with women entrepreneurs. And I feel uh, the, the impact of this uh, COVID-19 has a lot on the women entrepreneurs because they have to take care of their family. They also have to take care of their businesses. Mm, may I ask uh, Sarita how people are managing it? Uh, you must be interacting with multiple people. And what is their advice? What is your advice for a woman entrepreneur in 2021? I think we, we, we lost uh, Sarita for some time. Let uh, let to see if she joins back. Uh, going forward, let me ask Rajiv. Uh, now, uh, this uh, since you are from the FMCG market, supply chain is one of the crucial for uh, goods to move from the factories uh, to to the warehouse to to the retail. Uh, and this is a big big uh, challenge which most of the FMCG and the manufacturing industries, uh, uh, small manufacturing and small consumer products had. Uh, is facing so going forward uh, what is the thought what is you think uh, this organization should do to ensure this there's uh, there's restrictions uh, this lockdown if they happens in future how they should cope it what kind of strategy they should have uh, to to ensure that this does not disturb the supply chain so uh, uh, supply chain actually is the uh, the basis on which uh, all FMCG companies or any business would, uh, you know, base their success. Now, uh, today, logistics are important insofar as reaching the distributors, the wholesale, the retail is concerned, as you rightly said. Uh, the problem is uh, uh, we need to ensure that uh, fresh stocks, uh, you know, are able to reach the consumer now today the consumer has become extremely uh, vigil i mean they, they are very vigilant so unless uh, this is taken care of the distributors have to cooperate they have to place the orders in time they have to and the sales force here this is where i uh, need to focus or uh, the companies need to focus the sales force need to service the retail stores to get their orders so that and there's something called in the FMCG parlance where you know we, we would do it, even the companies do it now, called the rolling sales forecast. So that you know, three months rolling sales forecast would give adequate time to the companies to plan their production and uh, you know uh, have their finished goods inventories in place so that they can supply to the distributors and then to the wholesalers and to the retailers and so on and so forth. Here it is important to note that uh, there's a like I've mentioned in my article. The sales, I'm not pointing fingers at anyone, but uh, the retailers have a great problem with companies here because there are a lot of stocks uh, that, that's with them, which is um, uh, out of date and cannot be sold, expired. So the companies need to take it back and supply them with fresh stock. This is where uh, supply chain management will have to be uh, monitored and uh, implemented properly. Now, here is where uh, uh, the top management or the senior management of the companies will have to take a call because uh, they are usually not very keen to uh, you know take back stocks really speaking 
uh, and I don't want to get into that right now. We all know what happens, but this is what needs to be done. And th they should also look at, um, uh, uh, you know, launching new products. The next three to five years are going to be very, very important, critical, in fact, because unless they uh, are able to bolster the top lines, uh, things will get very, very difficult. And launch of new products, I'm not saying do it immediately, but planning. Next three to five years will be important. And for that, uh, supply chain management will have to pay a, uh, play a very key role. Okay, good to see. Uh, thanks, Rajiv. And, and good to see uh, uh, Saritaji joining back. Uh, uh, so, Saritaji, uh, my question to you is, since you've been working a lot with women entrepreneurs, and they are one of the few, uh, they have been hit, uh, I think, uh, uh, more, and the impact on their businesses is far more because they have to manage both home and work. Uh, what is your advice for women entrepreneurs for 2021? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, women are affected more because of uh, you know two reasons. One is you know uh, in absence of domestic help, they had to do a lot of stuff. Especially you know when you are in job, nobody asks you to leave your job. But when you're running a business or a small business, uh, you know people take you for uh, granted, and still we live in the same world where you know the work that a woman does takes a back seat in such scenarios. And I think secondly, because employees have left and the businesses slack, they can't pay, you know, and uh, either they are working from home or they have left for their villages or town. So I think primarily two reasons why their businesses are affected, uh, you know, so much. My advice uh, to women entrepreneurs is, is right now it's the time to think on your feet and uh, create systems that you know that can work on autopilot both at home and in business i think use technology that require less labor and build network and system that could be handled from anywhere you know also they should look at opportunities that i spoke about uh, earlier mm, you know so basically uh, my belief is that it is tough time and very turbulent i think uh, uh, for all of us uh, but i i again and i uh, at the cost of repetition i'm again saying i think greater things are going to emerge out of it soon and i think women are going to do awesome in times to come Great. I think uh, we will be opening it up for people to have the questions. I see a couple of questions, but before I ask the questions, let me ask. Uh, 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 as for my knowledge, both Sanjay and Rajneesh have a, uh, have uh, have their own team, and and so let me ask them. How are you running your business currently? Uh, it's very good to advise others. This is the best practices we are following. So, and this is what you should do. And both of you are running your organization. Let me ask uh, this. Uh, how are you running your organization and what is the plan you have for 2021? Uh, uh, Sanjay, uh, if you can go first. You really caught us by the... <laughs> yeah, good. So I, I, I guess, first of all, consultants uh, like me are poor businessmen. Uh, so uh, maybe what we're doing is not necessarily right, but what we have done in terms of uh, HR practices is first of all uh, the moment the lockdown happened you see there was a lot of uncertainty and people were not knowing when the lockdown will even open out and things like that uh, so during that uh, period uh, I created a whatsapp group for all my employees and uh, I sent uh, repeated videos uh, to, to them uh, assuring them that not one of them would be kicked out of the job and that we are a team together and we will survive this together and everybody right from the top to bottom will face the same issues whatever it is so this was the first and that uh, gave a lot of positivity to the people so this was the first thing that you have to do when the adverse environment is there you have to bring positivity to your people uh, you have to reduce their uncertainty it's all to be taken absorbed by you next what we did is we operate in our company in three operation centers uh, now, obviously, each operation center was differentially loaded, which in a normal case we were allowing. But this time we made uh, everybody multi-skilled and we used those two months uh, for training and retraining. So the two months when people were not able to do anything, uh, we created a lot of content for them and uh, they created amongst themselves and we did a lot of Zooms, etc. And they we reskilled the same people. So those who were able to only operate in the aviation space, for example, they got skilled in other practices. So we did reskilling. And now 
projects come uh, they are handled of course the different operation centers have different managers who handle each one uh, including our chief operating officer but uh, they start working amongst themselves so the kind of collaboration internally that is is one third uh, we uh, said now even though offices have opened everyone will continue working from home because we are saving uh, i don't want my people to travel by metro because there is still a risk Uh, so i said you save 3 hours of travel time if i you come from uh, delhi to noida to work in office necessarily uh, he'll at least spend 3 hours up and down of travel time i said use that productively uh, so we have a very simple uh, effort and uh, output uh, ratio which the managers uh, manage uh, even by simple tools uh, every day they just give the assignment now we are not bothered when you do it you don't bother whether you do it sitting in your uh, room or your rajai or whatever you have to do this by the end of the day so in fact it has boosted our productivity uh, quite a bit so these are the four things that we did and uh, uh, today our uh, teams uh, are uh, first of all very happy that as compared to even large corporates not a single employee has been removed from the job uh number 2 they have become more productive the quality of their life in uh, travel terms etc has uh, you know sort of improved and uh, number 3 they can see the whole large picture of uh, tmipl as a company not just their operation centers so i i think this is doing good for us uh, and a plus of course we continue the networking and collaborations rather than hiring though we have uh, taken on two new people uh, during uh, this period also because uh, business may be down for one year or something but uh, we have to prepare for future and uh, in our line it takes long time to train people uh, so uh, if you have to prepare for uh, 2025 or 2021 also we have to start training people from today uh, so we have not hesitated to do that and we have taken uh, people that Great, great. I think those are good insights for people to to look at. Uh, Rajnish, uh, uh, yeah. your thoughts? <laughs> you know, I I loved it when you really cornered two of us, and and that was a brilliant move. Really felt court martialed, literally. And so, but but that made me really thinking. And when when Sanjay's boss was speaking, I I was busy jotting down some points, which I thought you know I was just doing a recap what we did in March, what we have done during these nine months, and what we are doing now. So there have been. literally two three phases of uh, if i may call them interventions that we really do uh, to keep the team uh, i think first of all morale high uh, and, and number two uh, ensure their safety uh, and number three of course ensure that the uh, business continuity is maintained so i think broadly if i look at it and i i, I then came up with these very nice five c's that that i could really put a framework to the entire thing that we really immediately did i think the very first thing the moment the lockdown got announced uh, the that top thing if you really ask me was the care for the employees i think the first c is care and and there very immediately what we did sandeepan was we immediately took a 50% cut at the leadership level we are a four member partner team and and then there is a senior member uh, who heads our west uh, operations so all five of us immediately voluntarily just took 50% cut immediately number 2 the team took a 10 to 15% cut so those were immediate rapid kind of a movement that that happened on the cost factor which is the next c we were about to get into a new office april 1 we just shelved it whatever advance we had given to the person who was giving us the office we said you just keep the money because you are going to need it for your labor please keep the money but we do, we are not wanting to get into an office now because we know it's not required right so as of now till 31st march 2021 there's no office for simply hr and we are very very seriously thinking do we really need a office moving forward we'll probably uh, come to that in april the third c was clients i think it was very very critical we knew that some clients who will be hit very hard will come to us and tell us look we can't continue now so we're going to take a pause and which is what happened we readily agreed we moved forward some clients came back and said look we are restructuring we are going to cut down your fees we were absolutely okay with it so i think it was important to really adapt to what the client was going through and i think it was important to sync up with that very fast the fourth c is communication i i believe 
in times of crisis the real leadership is tested if you are not communicating enough i think the first thing that we did and i did personally was to take subscription of zoom and we started fortnightly call on zoom because i wanted to see the face of each of my team member every fortnight even if we had distanced ourselves people had gone to their hometown i was very clear in my head i want to interact with each one of them every alternate friday for the last 9 months we have interacted we have had fun we had quizzes together we have done a lot of things so i think that was very very important so a zoom a subscription immediate move and number 2 to put a structure around it to have a fortnightly call was something that we kept doing and i think what has happened trust me right now i'm spit, sitting in chandigarh we just came to chandigarh today and we're kicking off a, a very large assignment tomorrow what has happened is in the ninth month we have actually built the highest invoice for a hiring that we have done of a senior person number 2 this assignment that we are kicking off tomorrow is one of the highest consulting assignment that we are kicking off kicking off tomorrow now to get you know these two kind of a high in the ninth month honestly gives me immense you know a push or a boost that things will get better and and i i think at a very individual level the three words that i was using on my social media platforms was we shall overcome i think it was important for us as entrepreneurs to keep messaging ourselves that boss we will manage and we will come out of this i think those were very important things and i think tanipur for us uh, that has held us good and and probably we we are going to come back even better now let's see good to hear that i think good to hear that that the positive stories of this uh, pandemic is needed to be shared uh, people need to get out of their head that okay this is going to be a challenge this is going to be a very bad for them very really good to hear uh, so before we uh, we are uh, maybe around 5 to 10 minutes ahead of schedule but we'll take a couple of questions before we wind up so there's a question and i'd like uh, sham to take this let's talk about uh the information security and privacy terms are still uh, uh some blind corners for most um, smes there are quite a lot of ignorance and uh, unawareness among us uh, them while digitalization and remote working are boons for in the pandemic area uh, pandemic era it may end up quite clearly when going digital is an inevitable move when e-commerce remote working massive cloud adoption are the new normal what are the basic approaches and tips would you suggest to entrepreneurs community so you being an expert i think let me ask this sham this okay. question I mean, is from mahadevan vijay okay nice sir um yes certainly uh, along with the digital there are pros and cons as well right uh, um though i'm not an um technology specialist so to say i'm a business specialist who understand digital space pretty well um having said that um, it depends upon the kind of business that you are into right if your business has to do with a lot of customer data and consumer data then uh, there has to be security systems that has to be in place right in terms of uh, uh, you can look at bs 7799 those whether you comply to those uh, systems and procedures and processes so there are specific um, uh, people who can uh, uh, you know do an inspection and find out whether do you comply with that kind of a scenario that's one uh if you are looking at a regular other business you don't deal with consumer data and things like that but just that your company information and stuff then you will need to have those respective systems which will trigger alerts of or those files or uh, processes which are not to be touched by somebody else you need to know that what's being accessed you need to have logs created okay some of the tips that you can look at is you know you find out where you know who's able to access what why do, do they have the mandate to an access those kind of information from your system so you need to have those basic uh, you know uh, guidelines in place and uh, third if it is very sensitive obviously they will need to come to the system uh, to come to the office right and start to work this predominantly happens from the it companies where where uh, they have a dedicated uh, uh, setup you know enclosures they call it as where employees of one particular project are not even uh, you know approached by even their own fellow colleagues into that enclosed area right as it's called as a firewall within a within a building a firewall within a firewall kind of a stuff so they uh, work out of that so if it is that sensitive then you have no choice but to come to the office and work but as an sme i don't i'm 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 guessing that you probably don't have such kind of a larger uh, norm but uh, all uh, you will need to create roles 
uh, some of the tips are as an administrator you will need to create roles and give specific access to specific areas that people will actually want to do it and it is always a need based right uh, it's, it's it's a demand based need based kind of a scenario and of course beyond that there's always always a question of trust but besides trust you should have systems in place to ensure that these are areas that you are able to uh, tackle and address it and of course cloud um, if if you if you take it through a, a let's say whether it's a microsoft azure or amazon uh, web service of course we use that and um, uh, yes uh, the privileges and the rights need to be very clearly defined articulated responsibilities clearly uh, shared understood uh, with your own teams uh, as to who's responsible to do what and finally i would always recommend you have a backup that is happening virtually every single day so in the worst case scenario you have the work of only one day that is getting impacted in the worst case scenario so i think you need to have those basic processes to ensure that your business keeps running while you have those um, you know exposures that are actually there in the business thanks sham i think this should be quite informative for us, uh, for, for people to get uh, to the security aspects uh, there's a question about startups are working on very tough environment and with financial constraint how do we cope up and build consumer or audience uh, customers with a low marketing budget so let uh, me ask sarita to respond to them this question is comes from abhishek mehta sarita can I, I take think, this question yeah yeah i think uh, uh, with thin budgets the best part is i think uh, story building has emerged out as excellent tool for marketing i think uh, uh, and it applies to almost all uh, products and services many people don't know about it i think you one can take workshops on story building and work on using platforms such as linkedin facebook you know i think again uh, as per research and as per my own experience also linkedin has also emerged as one of the you know fantastic plat platform for organic marketing and a lot of storytellers have you know really got really good business i myself as a coach you know by making certain videos and using my knowledge and expertise i get a lot of leads uh, which are organic from linkedin and which actually convert and anybody can learn this uh, on a very low budget if you don't know so i think using uh, first suggestion is using uh, online platforms social media which is app for your business so you know maybe linkedin is not for you so it, please figure out which media is best for you is it instagram is it facebook depending on your uh, target audience and then second suggestion is to work on networking i think businesses and uh, especially startups i've seen founders and people who are at the helm of affairs they are they do not utilize their own network so this is the right time to see who can help you if it is about funding challenge see who can help you can you access any bank there is a scheme that government has launched just see if you can avail any benefits out of those schemes look at people who are already you know um, uh, established in your industry and take the suggestions network with people who can advise you who can support you either financially or they can connect you with people who can help you and i think third is uh, to you know uh, work on innovative channels to market yourself so apart from social media there are other modes as well you can collaborate with influencers you can work on totally new strategy and i think this is the right time to actually understand what my marketing strategy is a lot of people work on sales which is actually delivering the product how will somebody buy just for some time just move your focus away from sales to marketing which will give you leads and create a funnel right now which can actually work in future so these these would be my suggestions especially yeah. for people who are you are having challenges in marketing i think uh, networking is really important and, and i i can personally uh, say that networking has helped us and all our panelists have been met at some of the events at smb connect so this is uh, uh something which i can vouch for it and uh i will not like to miss the opportunity to to to, to promote smb connect so you can always connect with smb connect to reach out to the best of the people who can uh, help you in your business uh, and give you guidance so we are just about to, uh, to running uh, out of time so before i wrap up let me ask this uh, to all of this uh, all your audience uh, all the uh panelists uh 2020 was the age uh, where the survival was the top most priority of most of the organization so what are the top two priorities for business in 
as we see the vaccines are going to roll out. So let me ask, start with Rajiv. Two priorities for business in 2021. Uh, see, uh, the companies uh, and uh, uh, someone said uh, employees, they have lost out majorly. For companies, I think the top most priority to get back to their pre-lockdown days in terms of their revenue and their bottom lines. And for employees, I think it will be important for them to get the motivation in place and go back to work. Sanjay, two priorities for businesses in next year. Uh, I would say, uh, number one, I would, if I was the owner of a company for any business, number one, how innovative uh, have we become? Uh, and there's a reason for that. Uh, you know, at one time, productivity used to be considered the source of competitiveness. And the 70s were full of uh, national productivity and whatever. Uh, then uh, when Maruti came up, 80s, uh, supply chain became the biggest issue. But now we have uh, my company and I am Bangalore. We have empirically proved that innovation is the source of competitiveness here on. So the first thing that any owner should do is to see how innovative have has my company become. Number two, I would say uh, there may be hits in the current uh, your turnovers may have halved or whatever. But how future prepared are you? How prepared for the future are you? These are the two questions which I would ask. Uh, any owner to check about his own company and do a real uh, assessment around these two innovativeness and preparedness for future. So, Shyam Shekhar. I think we are not, uh, you, you're on mute, uh, Shyam. Yeah, thanks. So yeah. I had uh, talked about the uh, business model reinvention in terms of uh, how your customers are uh, heading towards in this new space. So I think positioning your business model should be the key. But besides that, two critical areas that I would like to touch upon. Um, we have also looked at uh, you know people dependent kind of, a, especially in startup and SMEs, it's predominantly people dependent, okay? Because we have lesser number of people. The resources are very limited, whether it is uh, people, money, technology, and stuff like that. So which means we are far more dependent on people. So I think it is time to look at a process driven kind of an approach so that people can be quickly replaced. There have been instances when people go, they don't come back, right? Uh, there are people suddenly who may just drop off, you know, with, due to whatever the, with the reasons, right? So if, if this is going to be there uh, for uh, some more time, at least the next one, one and a half years, but then should there be something coming up five years down the line? So why not your business be prepared to ensure that you ensure that the process is taking charge rather than the people taking charge. So you need to re-look at that, the skills cross leverage. I think uh, uh, Rajni has also uh, talked about uh, the unlearning, the cross leveraging of that. We do that. People should be one person, uh, multiple people should be able to do one kind of a task so that even if one resource is not there, the other is able to take over your business keeps running. So process centric and uh, um, you know leveraging resources to do handle multiple things. The second most important thing is culture when you hire again i'm touching upon uh, rajneesh's uh, point so when you hire people look out for the culture because culture eats strategy for breakfast you know everybody knows i have also mentioned it in the ebook so uh, pick up uh, people uh, not just for skills right uh, that's not going to take long people can learn skills within no time i think it's about attitude culture and along with that uh, we also talked about you know other fellow panelists talking about zoom and things like that yes communication becomes absolutely critical i ins i insist let people over communicate rather than not communicating at all. So I think that's the key uh, that business owners, of course, other points of uh, have been already been addressed. So I want to highlight these two uh, points in specific. And one last word is you pointed out saying 2020, you have survived. What should we do for 2021 and 2025? So I'm picking the same point and saying, yes, we have been under tremendous stress, right? The businesses across the world, across the country, Every city, every state has been impacted, right? Only with stress, muscle builds. You have built the muscle. Better leverage that and take off great in 2021 and further into 2025 and beyond. Thanks. Rajesh, uh, your uh, two priorities. Yeah, so I think uh, I'll, I'll go back to what I was, and so I was just recapping, and one of the words Sham picked up already. 
which was about reinventing. Uh, I think for businesses, it will become very, very important that they reinvent as much as I was talking about people also reskilling themselves. So businesses to reinvent, people to reskill, I think those are the two things for the two entities out there who really make business happen. Uh, number two, of course, is, is the big ticket about around cost uh, mindfulness, as I would call it. I think a lot of focus needs to be there. Uh, yes, SMEs in India have always been very conservative. Uh, so thanks to that, you know, some of them have survived. They've done brilliantly well. But I think uh, we will need to become more judicious around it. Some of the startups, I guess, uh, who were having a real gala time, I think they have been really knocked hard. I'm sure they have realized the importance of money now, suddenly. Uh, and, and so I think it will be important that uh, companies really uh, lay a lot of emphasis on really looking at their cost management across the board. I mean, everything that do uh, money really needs to be uh, you know, understood in a much, much better manner and spent in a much wiser manner. I think that is what one would really look forward to. Great. So uh, Sarita, uh, before we wind it up. Uh... Yeah, I, I think uh, in my view, if you see, I think most critical element uh, which is going to be there for next few years is relationship building, whether it's your customers, uh, whether it's your investors, your clients, uh, you know, even your employees and vendors, because uh, there's going to be a lot of competition in terms of cost and uh, people are looking at many options, especially to minimize their cost. So I think uh, unless and until you build that relationship and offer them something, you know, uh, you can't survive. I, I feel so. And I think uh, the second most critical point would be uh, looking at the bottom line approach, which is building operational efficiency and making your company more sustainable in future. Great. I think uh, quite a few uh, things can be picked up, like uh, reskilling, uh, innovations, uh, processes, and, and, and a whole lot of it which people can focus on. I think uh, we have stressed quite a bit. Uh, so let's. Uh, uh call it a day uh before i i say thanks to all our panelists uh, let me just uh, update, uh inform all our audience that we are planning around four more sessions with different authors uh on the topic of vision uh, 2025 and game plan 2021 our next session is on 6th of january we will have uh, mangal karnad she is from bangalore a digital marketing expert We'll have Vinod K. Pandita, uh, a business operations expert from Delhi. We'll have Nitin Dakshane, a sales and uh, expert, a sales and marketing expert, preferred, uh, has worked a lot in the space of small and medium businesses. We'll have Dr. Dean Dial Swine uh, from Orissa, who is a transformational expert. And we will have Rajan Kolath from Mumbai, who is an expert, is a CA, chartered accountant, and a financial expert, a strategy expert. So these five. Uh, Experts will be with us on 6th of January. Uh, please uh, communicate, uh, do join us for that. We will share this information. Apart from that, we will have a session on 17th of, uh, sorry, 15th of January. Uh, fourth uh, session will be on 22nd of Jan January, and the last one will be 30th of January. So this five sessions we are having with five different speakers, or uh, five different experts who have contributed to this ebook. So you can all uh, join us. You can also share uh, this information to your friends and peers so that they can join and get the benefit of uh, being in connect connected with these experts. We will also share all this information uh, to SMB Connect uh, social media so that you can always access them. And if you want to connect with any of the speakers, uh, uh, do let us know. Uh, you can always reach us back and we can connect. There is a question I have seen uh, by, by uh, Manish Srivastava, who is planning to launch a uh, building material e-commerce. If you want to reach out either Sanjay or Sham or anybody, do let us know, and we will connect uh, with either of them. So thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, Sham. Thanks, Rajneesh. Thank you, Sanjay. Thank you, Sarita Ji. And thank you, uh, Rajiv, for being here. It was a really wonderful uh, session we had. I think it's a good interaction. A lot of insights for all our uh, delegates who have joined us. And uh, uh, we will reach you. Uh, if anybody wants to reach you, uh, we will connect uh, them with you. We will share all the information to them. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjeev. Thank you. Bye bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye.